Okay, so good morning to everyone. And uh, as you can notice, this would be a pre-recorded uh, audio or video for the chapters two, three, and four topics for uh, macro tourism, a macro perspective of uh, tourism and hospitality. Now we've moved on with chapter two. So on your screens, we have the history and uh, the history of tourism and hospitality. So, uh, of course, in this chapter, we will be discussing or all of you must able to uh, describe, to explain, to identify the different factors, the international travel patterns, the origins of the tourism and hospitality in the Philippines, as well as the whole history of the tourism and hospitality industry. So now let's uh, get first with our uh, first topic, the history of uh, tourism industry. So in early tourism, uh, this is the first topic that we will be discussing under the history of tourism industry. So travel and exploration are the basic to human nature. Man has traveled since the earliest time, although the term tourism was used only in the 19th century. So tourism is derived from the Hebrew word Torah, which means studying, learning, or searching. Okay, so a uh, Torah. Tourism came from the Hebrew word Torah. Tourism can trace its necessary or ancestry in the Old Testament of uh, the Bible. Noah with his ark must be uh, the first large scale operator, even though his passengers were mostly alam naman natin na animals. So early uh, tourism have two forms. So we have two forms of tourism. The first form of uh, tourism is the travel for business, such as trading, and the second uh, form is religious travel. So we have two early uh, tourism forms. Number one, again, is the travel uh, for business, uh, just like trading. And number two is the religious travel. Okay, so please take note on that. So merchants traveled extensively in order to trade with the other nations and tribes. So the invention of a money, writing, and will, uh, it is facilitated by the Sumerians. Uh, sila yung unang mga nakagawa uh, ng ganito. Sila yung uh, mga unang um, nagkandak ng mga ganitong business type. Sa industry, ano? So, during the medieval period, travel natin ay declined. So, in travel natin came from uh, the word travail, which uh, became the burdensome, the dangerous, and demanding during this time. And uh, during the renaissance of, or uh, including itong si... A Roman Empire natin at saka si Greek Empire natin. Ano, the Greeks and the Romans were well-known traders as uh, their respective empires increased the travel uh, became necessary. And there was also travel for private purposes like the Olympic Games held in uh, 776 BC by the Greeks and uh, the travel by the rich Romans for enjoyment and to visit their uh, friends and relatives. So the Roman traveler was largely aided by improvement in communications, in first class roads and inns, employing relays of horses, this, uh, distances of 100 miles or more could be covered in one day. So uh, after uh, the decline of uh, the Roman Empire nung uh, 5th century natin. 
yung roads natin as you notice dun sa picture na on your screen ay hindi pa ganun ka-constructed. Ano, were not maintained. Uh, it became unsafe to uh, live at your home. Uh, meron din tayong mga thieves inflicted harm on those uh, who dare to travel. No one uh, during this time traveled for pleasure. Ang mga nakakapag-travel lang nitong Roman Empire is yung ating mga crusaders or yung ating mga pilgrims. Okay? So, travel for religious reason took the form of a pilgrimage, just what I've mentioned earlier, to places of worship, such as uh, Chaucer's tale of a pilgrimage to uh, the Canterbury. In uh, 14th century, it is mentioned that Rome, Jerusalem, and St. James of Galicia was the foremost destination of those pilgrims, specifically English pilgrims. So in 1388, the English pilgrims were required to obtain and carry permits and also uh, the forerunner for the modern passport. So we have modern passports non. In addition to that, as you can notice on your screen, this is the first um, mostly uh, the visited destination in terms of the Crusaders and the Pilgrims in uh, 14th century. Now let's move on with uh, tourism in the medieval period. So just what I've mentioned earlier, uh, most of uh, the crusaders and pilgrims are the only ones who can travel uh, in time of the medieval period. Ano? Medieval period. And travel is derived from the word travel that became burdensome, dangerous, and demanding. So take note on that. And according to Coson, According to Coson, uh, one of the uh, historians said a guide was paid a large fee because he is not only led uh, the way but also generated safe to the travelers. Eventually, yung tour guide natin be uh, began to be suitable and uh, naging acceptable itong job na to. Kaya uh, after this uh, century, naging tuloy-tuloy na up until to present yung mga tour guide job positions natin ano because uh, we help a lot not just in memorizing or uh, viewing what would be the next uh, destination uh, what are the historical um, commemoration of this uh, certain uh, place so on and so forth ayan this is uh, another example of uh, the early the early uh, sites or destinations most of our tourists uh, took for their destinations. Now let's move on with the tourism uh, during the Renaissance and the Elizabeth era. So meron dan tayo nito. And uh, the travel for education in the 16th century under uh, Elizabeth uh, I or si Queen Elizabeth I natin, Yung young men natin, they're seeking positions where they are uh, encouraged to travel to the continent to widen their education. And of course, pleasure-seeking young men of uh, leisure travel predominantly through uh, the Europe countries, wherein it included the France and Italy. So to enjoy the culture and social life in Europe with Venice, with Florence, and Paris, that was the key attractions noong 16th century natin in the era of Elizabeth. Ano? So, uh, as the young men sought intellectual improvement in their continent, the Sikh sought uh, a remedy for their illness, kaya nagkaroon tayo ng mga spa or medical baths nung uh, Elizabeth era natin or uh, the Renaissance era. So the term spa is derived from uh, the Wallon word spa, meaning fountain. And uh, the Turnbridge um, 
the Turnbridge Wells in Kent, it is nearby London. It became famous as a spa in uh, the 1660s. Ano, no 16th century natin. So, yung travelers natin immerse themselves in uh, the different healing waters. So, uh, the education of a gentleman should be completed by a grand tour. Included pa rin dito sa ating Renaissance and Elizabethan era. So, of the cultural center of uh, the continent, which lasted three years. So excursions were taken uh, by the first class youth. Uh, they are also called the Grand Tourist for uh, they are uh, visiting the destination for cultural and educational reasons. So the tourists were expected to enrich their knowledge through long journeys while being accompanied by a Cicerone. So the Cicerone uh, named after Cicero, uh, the most esteemed guide in a uh, European society. So, meron na tayong tour guide nito. And uh, this is under Cicero. Ano? So, the guide was expected to be well-versed in many subjects. He must be or she must be articulated and multilingual. So, dapat ay marunong tayong uh, uh, kaya natin mag-translate, kaya natin makipag-communicate with other uh, languages and uh, foreign countries. So, pleasure-seeking, as what I've mentioned uh, with the young men earlier, so mostly their culture and social life uh, being uh, go with uh, the destinations from Europe, just like Venice, Florence, and France. Those are the key attractions in the 16th century. And uh, the spa, uh, the term spa, derived from Walloon word, spa, meaning fountain. And uh, now we move on to uh, the tourism during the Industrial Revolution. So the Industrial Revolution brought about major changes, not only technological changes, but essential social changes that made travel desirable as recreational activity. So the increase in productivity, regular employment, and growing urbanization gave more people uh, the opportunity to go on holiday. So the emerging middle class combined higher incomes and a growing education into annual holidays. So to escape uh, from their responsibilities uh, nung ating uh, industrial revolution era, uh, their responsibilities and the crowded city environment, they traveled to the countryside or even to the seashore for their uh, holidays. So this led to the creation of working class resorts near major industrial centers. Kaya nagkaroon ng mga malalaking uh, building na ngayon sa iba't ibang uh, sa iba't ibang mga uh, sulok, di ba? Lalo na kapag malapit sa dagat, lalo na kapag maraming uh, or malayo sa mga typical na natural or man-made destination. So, si Industrial Revolution natin brought about major changes, not only technological changes, but also essential social changes that made the traveler desirable as a recreational activity. So, nagkakaroon ng uh, increased productivity sa regular employment ng local community and yung uh, urbanization natin grows more ano and they gave more uh, people the motivation on and also the opportunity to go on holiday to try uh, all of those um uh, activities all of the products and services na ino-offer ng inyong um business so Next, let's move on with the modern tourism. So, the tourism in the 19th century. So, uh, the introduction ng mga railway and the development of steam power are introduced in the 19th century. So, the railroads created not only more businesses, but providing reliable and cheap transportation and also more competition as various private companies invested heavily on hotels, resorts, and entertainment facilities. So, yung steamers natin on the major rivers, they provide reliable and 
and expensive transportation that led to the popular yung mga day trip cruises natin and growth of the coastal resorts near in the industrial towns. So tourism became organized in the later uh, or in the latter years of 19th century and uh, the travel organizer emerged and the first and most Famous or famous of this was Thomas Cook. Okay, so Mr. Thomas Cook, his first excursion train trip between Leicester and Loughborough in uh, 1841 with 570 passengers at around repair of one shilling. So in uh, 1866, he organized American tour. In 1874, he introduced the circular notes, which uh, were accepted by the banks, hotels, shops, and restaurants. Kasi wala pa no na uh, mga perang papel. Ano, circular notes pa lang ang tawag natin doon. So with John Mason Cook, he formed a partnership and renamed the travel agency as Tomac Thomas Cook & Son. So binago niya uh, yung uh, name ng company nila. In the 19th century also, photography and the guidebooks became popular in this century. So the most popular of this was the Bay Decker, first published in uh, 1839, which became the leading guide for uh, the European tourist. Okay, so in uh, the modern uh, tourism in 19th century, uh, just think of it or Always remember na dito nag, uh, nagsimula yung mga railroads, steam power natin, yung mga uh, start ng ating mga day trip, ano, day trip visitation with a destination or uh, any attractions and uh, other um, became popular in this century. Now we move on to the modern, modern, uh, Tourism, 20th century naman ito. So, forgive me for uh, the typographical error on uh, the PowerPoint presentation. So, at the beginning of 20th century, pleasure travel continued to expand, uh, encouraged uh, by the increasing wealth, curiosity, and outgoing attitudes of the people as well as the increasing ease of such movement. So, in World War I, uh, they brought about many changes. Early uh, post-war prosperity coupled with a large-scale migration boosted the demand for international travel. And there are a lot of new forms of uh, the mass communication. And uh, it uh, simulated curiosity about with the different countries. So the influence ng ating mga posters, ng mga press, ng cinema, ng radio, ng television, it widened our knowledge and interest in uh, traveling. And after the World War I, the forms of travel begin to change radically. So lalong mas uh, yung mga railway natin as means of travel of declined uh, with the introduction of the motor car, uh, yung motorized na yung ating public road transport, and nag-improve na yung ating mga road condition that led to uh, the popularity of uh, ng ating mga seasides. And in World War II naman, uh, it also led to increase the interest of uh, the travel, air travel, and uh, had become more comf uh, comfortable, safer, faster and cheaper in comparison with other forms of uh, transportation. So it also inter uh, introduced the Boeing 707, if you are familiar with that. Uh, this is a jet, uh, no, the fastest jet in uh, this century. And uh, in 1958, the age of the air travel for the masses arrived, hastening or uh, the decline of the sea travel. Kasi fastest mode of uh, transportation natin, alam naman natin yan, is si air travel. So travelers switched to the use of cars, uh, and this change affected both coach and rail services. So yung mga private car natin, it provided flexible transportation, which freed 
people from the scheduled and fixed routes of uh, the public transport. So, hindi na nila kailangan mag-abang uh, or maghintay ng mga dadaang sasakyan on the same date, di ba? Kung saan ang route netong uh, bus na ito for today, so on and so forth. So, in the 20th century also, uh, the post, uh, after the post war rec recovery, uh, as what I've mentioned, nagkaroon na ng increase sa private car ownership. And yung economic uh, recovery natin dito is uh, nag -increase, uh, increase then in discretionary income and also the leisure time. And uh, yung mga tao noon, nung uh, post-World War II, they converted into increased recreation and travel uh, type of people na din. So the governments have created more vacation time by incorporating the isolated public holidays into the familiar long weekends na meron tayo ngayon throughout the year. So a business and uh, a trade prospered in the developed countries. Business travel also flourished. Uh, leading to the demand not only for individual but also for conference and incentive travel on a worldwide scale. So, in prospects natin for the continued growth of world tourism in 20th century, it appeared to be the most promising. So, in societal trends natin are favorable to the continued growth of our demand. Now, let's move on with... Uh, the history of hospitality industry. So this is in the ancient empires. We have the Rome, Greece, the Assyria, Babylon, Egypt, Persia. So in ancient period, uh, first is uh, the Sumerians. So the record history, uh, the, the recorded history, Sorry, the recorded history of the hospitality industry began with the Sumerians. Ang mga Sumerians natin ang group of people who live in Mesopotamia near the Persian Gulf about 4000 BC or before Christ. So in Sumerians natin became prosperous as well as skilled farmers, farmers and cattle breeders. Ano? So the Sumerians natin, they invented the money and writing as a means to record and settle their business transactions. And also, uh, ang ating mga Sumerians were the first to develop trade in the modern sense of the world. So politically, uh, yung Sumerians natin, they organized themselves into uh, city-states. Ano? City-state and Sumerian traders natin, they require the uh, services of travelers, uh, namely food, drinks, and shelter. And also, yung ating uh, local Sumerians, uh, Sumerian taverns, were established in making... Uh, in making them uh, the first hospitality business. Pag sinabi nating taverns, it can be the inns, uh, pubs, ano... Hotelries, hostelries. So it is most likely that the hospitality industry began with uh, the Sumerians in 5,000 years ago in 3,000 uh, BC or before Christ. So these taverns, uh, itong mga taverns na to, they serve beer uh, to the local people noong uh, time ng Sumerians natin. So early traders in uh 20, uh, 2000 BC, a considerable amount of trade had developed among the people in the Middle East and uh, they became traders of exotic goods. So, yung need nila with the, hus uh, the needed hospitality services for their long journeys, uh, that's why uh, nagkaroon tayo ng mas maraming mga inns, homestays, diba? Some uh, enterprising individuals, they set up a, a caravan sarai which provided food and shelter for our travelers. So these were the early examples of inns uh, in uh, the 2000 BC. So empires, 3200 uh, BC to 476 uh, AD. Ano? So from 3200 BC to 467 uh or 76 AD, there are three significant empires that flourished 
the uh there uh there are the egyptian the the greek and the roman so this period is known to historians as the empire era so under the empire era the significant empires na nag-flourish ng tao na to are the egyptian the greek and the roman so egyptian empire Uh, these are the Egyptian Empire developed slowly over several thousand years. So, nung uh, 3200 BC, various groups had been united under one government rule by a parao. Ano? So, pag sinabi natin parao, this is a Egyptian term for king. So, the famous pyramids, pyramids or tombs of the Paraos became the tourist attractions that many people traveled long distances to see these pyramids uh, on Egypt or in Egypt. Greek Empire naman natin. This is an ancient Greek civilization that began to develop about 1100 BC and it evolved the form of independent city-states. Itong mga city-states natin were united by uh, Philip of uh, Macedonia in the middle of uh, the 3rd century BC. So his son, Alexander the Great, I know you are familiar with Alexander the Great. He built an empire that surrounded the Mediterranean and extended as far east as India. So yun ang empire ng Greek natin. The Roman Empire naman, is uh, in 146 BC, after many years of conflict, si Greece natin became a Roman protectorate. So, yung Roman efforts natin at uh, territorial expansion continued. So, by the time, Rome conquered most of the Western Europe and the Middle East. So, yung inns and taverns natin noon was or were established na throughout the empire. And yung Romans natin, they constructed uh, elaborate inns along the main roads of the officials and uh, careers of the Roman government. So, Marco Polo described these inns as fit for king. So, the Roman uh, public restaurants served ordinary food to the people. In the ruins of Pompeii, there are many small restaurants that are similar to fast food restaurants na meron tayo ngayon at present. So, it is believed that the Romans were the first to establish the first ever restaurant chain. Ano, restaurant chain natin from the beginning. Now, let's talk about the medieval period. So, we have the Dark Age. So, in the Dark Ages, throughout this period, yung Roman Catholic Church natin, they took over the job of feeding and housing the travelers. So, both religious and uh, lay people. So, members of the religious orders planted vegetables and even her herbs and raised animals for meat and grew grapes for wine. So, the most famous of this monastery shelter was the Hospice of uh, St. Bernard. Diba? Uh, hospitality came from the word uh, hospice, hospital, hostels, hospitare. So it is located in the Alps, 8,110 feet above the sea level. So travelers were not charged for lodging. Those who were able to pay were expected uh, to give donations. Ano, hindi yun siya tinatanggap as payment for uh, the lodging purposes, but just for the donation. In uh, Europe, Charlemagne established uh, the rest house uh, houses for pilgrims, and the main purpose was to protect yung ating mga pilgrims and they and to provide hospitality on their roots. So in medieval guilds, uh, held open houses para uh, receive natin yung ating mga pilgrims and. Accommodation in medieval guilds were similar to those of the monasteries. So a good example is the Steel Yard, a residence in London operated by the Hanseatic League and providing hospitality services doon sa ating mga traveler noon na became a burden to the religious houses. 
So yung uh, mga churches natin, they found it difficult para i-accommodate lahat ng travelers natin in limited space. Kasi hindi naman ganun kalakihan yung ating mga churches before. So the monastery uh, were overbooked. Kaya uh, nagkaroon sila ng uh, burden na i-accept or i-accommodate lahat yung ating mga travelers. Now, uh, let's talk about the uh, Renaissance 13, uh, 1350 AD to 1600 AD. Yan. Okay. So, during the Renaissance uh, era or in this uh, period, there were no restaurants or dining establishments. So, England, uh, sila yung mga merong taverns, pubs, and inns. But none of this uh, establishment served food. So they were generally avoided by the upper classes who dined and entertained in their homes. So yung concern natin about the table manner increased during this period kasi nanalaman na natin yung mga uh, attitude nila. Ano? So uh, yung rules nila to be observed at the dining, diner table or dinner table uh, developed. Nagkaroon na tayong mga behavior na Uh, hindi pwedeng ganito kapag gumakain, dapat ganito ang gagamitin nating spoon or fork, so on and so forth. People were instructed not to put food on their plates using their fingers. So noon, bawal talaga. So because such behavior is unpleasant and annoying to those people in Renaissance period. Also, burping at the dinner table was considered unacceptable. Uh, I think uh, burping uh, still uh, is not a good uh, behavior in uh, South Korean country. So, dapat uh, pag magbi-burp tayo ay uh, lalabas tayo or lalayo tayo. Ano? Sabi nga nila, okay na umutot, wag laang mag-burp doon sa harap ng maraming tao. So, early modern period tayo ng... Uh, 1600 AD to uh, 18,000 AD. So, in the 16th century natin, a type of eating place for commoners called an ordinary appeared in England. So, these places were uh, taverns that served a fixed price and fixed menu meal. So, kung ano yung nakalagay doon uh, sa kanilang menu, yun na yung kanilang uh, isa-serve sa inyo from uh, the beginning and also the price is fixed na. During this era, coffee and tea began to influence the culinary habits of our Western Europe. So, dito na nagkaroon ng development about tea and uh, slower than coffee as a common beverage. So, it became a widespread in England. And during the next century, yung, meron na tayong mga coffee houses uh, that are built in Europe. In the advent of stagecoach, Now, meron tayo stagecoach travel. Uh, it revolutionized the hospitality on uh, the roads. Kapag sinabi nating stagecoaches, ito yung mga carriage, yung mga horse-drawn carriage, yung mga hinihila ng kabayo, yung may mga cart, yun ang tinatawag nating stagecoach. So, followed by the building of stagecoach uh, or coaching inns. So, meron na din para uh, diretsyo na kayo. Ano? So, in the 1700s, the Uh, inns and Englands were much safer and more comfortable na. Meron na din tayong mga meals and this will be uh, an important element na in the development of the hospitality industry. Meron din tayong mga post houses that are similar doon sa ating coaching uh, inns. Uh, they were equipped to feed the drivers and the passengers and accommodate them overnight. They were located along the coaches' uh, routes para mas madali kayo and maging uh, to ensure the steady supply of customers ar who arrive by stagecoach. Okay. So, uh, the food service, or up until the late 18th century, there were no public restaurants up until 18th century. So, in England, uh, there were coffee houses na uh, where one could get uh, the light snacks or they offer light snacks lang. There were taverns that served daily ordinary, which the main meal 
is a fixed price. Ano? So, meron silang ino-offer na isang sorte na food na dun nyo lang makaka, uh, dun nyo lang maki, uh, mabibili. Yun ay normal everyday na ganun ang kanilang niluluto. So, the food service element of the hospitality industry changed dramatically in France in uh, 1765. So, a name, uh, Boulanger, operated a small uh, business that sold uh, yung mga soup and broths in Paris. So, these were known as restaurants. So, yung uh, unang pagbubukas ni Boulanger ng kanyang small business through soups and broth, ito na yung pag-open ng ating mga restaurants. So, a French word that means restauratives. So, Boulanger is recognized as the first to create the first restaurant. And another type of food service establishment na na-develop sa France was cafe. O yung tinatawag natin cafe. Cafe is a French word for coffee. So, itong mga development na to sa France in the late 18th century, uh, beginning of uh, the modern uh, restaurant industry na sa atin. Now, let's move on with the industrial era from 1800s or 18th century. So, in the industrial era, uh, the industrial revolution, which dates from the mid-1700s uh, or 7, uh, 1700, they started it in England. So, the development of railroad networks, uh, first in England, then in another country, had a greater effect on the hospitality industry than any. So, other development since the fall of the Roman Empire took uh, an advance or a great uh, advantage sa ating hospitality in the industry since uh, capable na tayo to travel because of the development of rail world, world, uh, sorry, railroads. The establishment of uh, railroads natin, yung mga stations nila, became excellent location for new hospitality business, ba? So, in England and uh, countries that develop railroad uh, networks, meron na rin sa kanila mga uh, nagtitinda, uh, mga uh, nag offer noon na uh, accommodation services near doon sa mga... Um, stations ng mga railroad natin. Modern period in 19th century under uh, the hospitality industry. So, in the last quarter of the 19th century, public dining is still not popular. So, many hotels were uh, constructed without dining facilities. So, yung mga hotel guests natin or yung mga tourists natin, they took their meals inside there rooms. So, in uh, 1875, a dining facility was opened in uh, the Albemarle uh, Hotel in London. So, uh, nitong taon na to, or nitong, uh, by this time, the term restaurant referred to dining room, uh, referred to the dining room of the hotel. So, in London, more luxurious hotels began to appear. Some were known uh, for their excellent guest accommodation and superior food and na meron na silang pwedeng i-offer. And one of the best uh, hotels uh, in that uh, year was uh, Savoy, the, uh, Savoy which, me, uh, which was opened by Richard Odily, Odoyle Cart in 1889 in the Savoy Odoyle Carty, who employed two men who became famous throughout the world, and those are Cesar, uh, Cesar Ritz and Auguste Escoffier. So, these two men revolutionized the hotel restaurant. So, kapag sinabi natin uh, si Auguste Escoffier, he is uh, the one of the greatest chef of all times. He is known for his classic book, uh, Le Guide uh, Culinary or liquide culinary, it's a French term. He also installed the kitchen brigade system 
and the Americans in this period used their ingenuity to create something for everyone. Uh, just like, for example, the Delmonico was the only expensive and aristocratic restaurant noon sa US. It was famous for its fine food. So they served a Swiss French cuisine and became the center of American gastronomy on the art of uh, good eating. So it's also known for its bilingual menus, baked Alaska, chicken ala king, and lobster Newburg. So although the modern hotel was an American invention, yung Europeans natin, they contributed the European plan na tinatawag natin. Itong uh, European plan natin, which meant that a guest need to pay both room and meals in one lump sum. Ano, in uh, one uh, price na magkasama na silang dalawa or combined na sila. But could pay for only the room and order the meal separately from an a la carte menu or eat somewhere else. Uh, they are also offering this uh, time of uh, type of um, plan, ano, sa European plan, na pwede mong uh, uh, i-avail, com uh, combine room and meal in one price, and uh, of course, pwede namang room lang yung i-avail mo, and uh, yung, yung meals ay you can uh, avail it separately inside na, and during your uh, staycation. So, uh, more innovations in the hospitality occurred in the 19th century, such as the custom dining out, better methods of preserving the food through uh, canning and vacuum packing, mass feeding for school children, and establishing of uh, ice cream parlors. So, nauso na yan noong 18th century. So, in 20th century naman natin, uh, in 1921, Walter Anderson and Billy Ingraham began the White Castle hamburger chains. So, meron na tayong mga hamburger chains na itong uh, 20th century. Si Marriott uh, Hot Shop and the Root Beer Stand opened in 1927. So, about this time, meron na silang mga drive-in and fast food restaurants also sprung up in America. In 1925 naman, Howard Johnson, he opened his original restaurant in Wollaston, Massachusetts. In, 13, uh, in 1934, the Rainbow Room opened. Uh, the Rainbow Room is an art uh, deco restaurant supported the re -emerge, uh, emergence of, the, uh, of New York as the center of power and glamour. In uh, 1937 naman, meron tayong Trader Vic's restaurant na nagbukas. The social light attracted to the Polynesian team restaurant. And they serve exotic drinks including the Mai Tai that Vic invented uh, mismo. So, 1939, meron naman tayong nag-open na uh, restaurant. They called it the Le Fabillion de France. And it opened in uh, New York City. So by the end of the 1930, every city had a deluxe, super, uh, superb uh, club or nightclub na noong 1930s. We also have the Four Seasons. Uh, Four Seasons also opened in 1939. Ito namang Four Seasons na to, this is the first restaurant to offer seasonal menus. Uh, pag sinabi natin seasonal, it can be summer, spring, fall, or winter, di ba? So, with modern architectural and art as theme. Uh, after World War II naman, there was a rapid development of ng ating mga hotels and coffee shops. And in the 1950s, uh, they saw the emergence of the fast food restaurant starting in 1950s. So, in uh, 1960s naman, meron na tayong mga fine dining restaurants noon that became popular, lalo na sa ating mga businessmen who would like to eat outside, di ba? And in the 1970s, uh, yung new establishments natin were introduced such as yung mga Taco Bell, medyo modern na tayo nito, TGI uh, Fridays, Houston and Red Lobsters, um, uh, Days Inn, um, Super 8 Motels, uh, and also yung mga Comfort Inns natin in the lodging industry. So in the... Uh, Restaurant industry, yung ating mga Taco Bell naman, yung mga naging uh, na-introduced nung 
uh, 1970s. And uh, corporation, corporation such as yung ating Four Seasons, Canadian Pacific uh, Marriott Hotel, and other uh, na mga sikat na, and high-class chains ay nagkaroon na ng boom or na-boost yung kanilang mga services noong panahon na ito. And uh, in 1990s naman, uh, they started uh, the recession that begins in eight, 1989. So, yung hospitality industry natin, uh, we experienced a downturn due uh, to the Gulf War na meron noong 1989. So, since noong 1993, nagkaroon naman na tayo ng recovery. Uh, yung economic natin, recovery was very strong. But... Uh, Several mergers and acquisitions have taken place and many corporations uh, have already expanded overseas para mas makapag uh, uh, parami sila ng mga investor as well as to broaden their uh, businesses all over the world. So we have the pioneers in the tourism and hospitality industries. Here are some of the several uh, some of uh, the outstanding individual uh, who gave or who have made a significant contribution to the growth of the development ng ating tourism and hospitality industry. Number one is Cesar Ritz, who became the general manager of Savoy Hotel in London. And this is the uh, one of the most famous luxurious hotel in the world. Ellsworth Milton Stadler. He is the... Uh, premier hotel man of all time. So he brought a standard of comfort and convenience to middle class travelers at an affordable price. So Conrad Hilton, of course, once recognized as the biggest hotel man of the world. He was described by the New York Times as the master of hotel finance. Thomas Cook, Siyempre, because he is recognized as the first professional travel agent and uh, the first founder of the world's uh, first travel agency or yung tinatawag natin Cook's Tour, di ba? Howard Deering Johnson, he was the pioneer of brand leveraging and uh, he was the one uh, to first introduce the franchising in 1930s. Uh, J. Williard Marriott, of course, uh, he founded the Marriott Hotel or the Marriott Corporation, which has continued to be an important asset of the hospitality industry up until today. Uh, Ray Kroc has been the most financially successful of all the hospitality entrepreneurs, and uh, he founded the McDonald's Corporation, a multi-billion dollar industry through his strong dedication, organization skills, perseverance, and uh, incredible aptitude towards marketing. And Crocs motto is never be idle a moment. Never be idle a moment was also incorporated into his uh, business. Pag sinabi natin idle, uh, never be lazy, wag tayong tatamad-tamad, ano, wag tayong uh, feeling empty lagi. Uh, Isador Sharp. Isador Sharp, a first-generation Canadian, was uh, the founder of the Four Seasons Regent Hotels, the world's largest hotel chain, and a multi-million dollar global hotel empire. And yun last natin is uh, Sir Ruth Perthel. So uh, she was uh, the founder of Chris Steakhouse, the largest uh, upscale restaurant in the United States. And it has 59 operations, 54 in the U.S. and Puerto Rico, and five internationally. So Ruth is the most successful women restaurateur at present. So uh, we have also the origins and hospital, uh, origins of the tourism and hospitality in the Philippines. So I forgot to uh, add... Uh, a slide for this one. And um, tourism and hospitality in the Philippines began when the original inhabitants of the country roam around in search for uh, food. So uh, a more recognizable form of tourism and hospitality appeared in Philippines when yung country natin is not discovered ni 
Ferdinand Magellan. And when the galleons of wooden boot, boats sailed between Mexico and the Philippines during the galleon trade. So during the American occupation naman ng uh, Philippines or of the Philippines, yung Americans natin, they were able to reach Manila after two weeks on board the Pan American Airways Air Clippers in uh, 1920s. So, uh, yung steamship and airline pioneers natin ay uh, yung China Clipper and the Manila Clipper. So, this brought some passengers to Manila via Hong Kong. So, yun yung una nating mga steamship and airline uh, or aircrafts. So, travelers from US, China, Japan, and Europe were provided inland tours by entrepreneurs with their unregistered private cars and coaches called color room. So, dito na nauso yung ating color room na tinatawag. So, pag sinabi natin, di bang color room, this is, uh, this means illegal. Illegal tour handling and illegal use of private cars for public use. So, it was tolerated by the government noon, uh, ng mga government authorities natin at that time, since tourism was not yet developed in our country. So, although there were already uh, visitor arrivals from the other country, uh, wala pa din tayong mga tour operators or travel agencies noon na nag exist formally. So, there were some offices like American Express International, which uh, informally arranged uh, the land tours for our foreign travelers. Yung mga steamship offer, uh, offices naman natin, uh, we endorsed tourists to a private car and coach operators na yung mga color room na tinatawag natin who rented their vehicles uh, going directly uh, with the tourists for one destination to go to other. So the, uh, the drivers of this vehicle serve as the tour guides na din, even without any formal training in tour guiding. So there were only few attractions and destinations in the Philippines before. Meron lang tayo, uh, uh, these were the Manila, Pangsanhan Falls, Laguna Lake Tour, Tagaytay and Taal Volcano, Mount Mayon Tour, Legaspi Tour, Baguio City Tour, and Banawi Tour. Other popular tours in South in the 1920s were uh, Cebu City and uh, Sambuanga City only. So, in uh, it was difficult to measure uh, yung ating mga tourist uh, activities noong World War II since they were uh, no statistical records. So, wala pa tayong mga offices and other informations and data na nagagather in this time. So, in 1947, a more orderly tourism activity nag-start na sa Philippines. Yung steamship natin began uh, to service the Philippines from the other country, thus giving uh, impetus to our tourism and hospitality industry or yung ating uh, motivation. O, ito na yung momentum natin nung taon na yon. So, in 1952, the first tourism uh, and hospitality association in the Philippines was organized. And this was the PTTA or the Philippine Tourist and Travel Association, which has uh, organized to put together all the exi uh, existing travel establishments serving both domestic and, of course, our international travelers. So, si PTAA natin was funded ng ating government para ma-promote yung ating tourism and hospitality industry. So, later, uh, the government also organized BTTI or the Board of Travel and Tourist Industry to regulate, to supervise, and to control uh, the tourist industry to subsidize the PTTA as its promotional arm. So, in the late 1952s, uh, marami na tayong hotel, restaurant, and entertainment facility na established. So, uh, there are a lot of um, histories included naman sa inyong next lecture notes. So, please be guided and uh, read it with understanding. So, uh, in early 70s, we have a temporary tourist boom in uh, the Philippines. 
ano, and uh, the National Tourism Organization of the Philippines or uh, yung tinatawag na natin yung Department of Tourism has embarked on several plans and programs para ma-insure natin yung pleasant at hospitable entry, uh, stay and departure of our tourists as well as uh, to assure harmonious, positive, constructive uh, development of tourism and hospitality industry. And there are uh, listed on your uh, lecture. So we have uh, the uh, factors also that favor the growth of tourism and hospitality. Some of the positive factors that hasn't uh, the growth of tourism and hospitality are the rising of disposable income for large sections of the population, growth in the number of retired persons who have the desire and energy to travel, Increase, uh, increase in uh, discretionary time, shorter uh, work weeks, and longer vacation, greater mobility of the population, growth in the number of singles, a greater credit ability through credit cards and bank loans, higher educational levels, the growth of the city, uh, simplification of travel through package tour, growth of multinational businesses, modern transportation technology, shift in values, advances in communication, and smaller families and changing roles. So those are the topics included uh, with our first chapter. Okay, so all of those uh, lectures na nabanggit ko or all of those topics are included on your uh, lecture for this second chapter. So if you have any question regarding with this uh, chapter, don't hesitate to uh, comment on the section uh, comment section box or comment box and uh, directly uh, message me on our group chat for more uh, if you have queries or questions. So thank you so much once again and I'll see you later on the next chapter.